everybody, my name is Lindsay and today I am really excited to do the mid-year book freakout tag. Let's get into the questions. Question number one is the best book that you've read so far this year. And that is a tough question because right now it is a tie between The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang, the second book in the Poppy War series, and Book of Jin the Beast by Ashley Poston, the third book in the Once Upon a Con series. So after I filmed this video and a second video, I watched an interview with Ashley Poston and found out that her last name is actually pronounced Poston, not Poston, and I apologize for that. I'm tempted to say Bookish in the Beast, but I know that that one's also fresher in my mind. I just finished it this week but they're both so different and it's really hard to decide which one was the best out of the two. I might just have to call it a tie for now. Bookish and the Beast is a young adult romance retelling of Beauty and the Beast. It's cute, it's fun, it's a celebration of nerd culture. And then The Dragon Republic is a military fantasy, adult fantasy based on Chinese history. And they're both so good. Bookish and the Beast made my heart so warm and made me so happy. And The Dragon Republic broke my heart. Both of them are so great. So, both <laughs> for now. The second question is much easier and it is the best, wait, no, unless sequel also means third book. Hang on a second. Well, so I thought that the second question was going to be an easy one because in my mind a sequel is just the second book, but the sequel can also mean the next book in a series. So also, <laughs> The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang or Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston both. Both is good. The next question is a new release that you want to read but haven't read yet, and there are a few on my list. There are three on my list. The first is Blood Like Magic by Lisa Sanberry, which is a book about a teenage witch who, in order to protect her family's magic, must kill the love of her life. The next book on my list is 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garzavia, which is about two boys who meet on Twitter after one of them accidentally outs himself on Twitter, and they begin a romance, and it looks really cute. And The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, which is his first nonfiction book in which he reviews aspects of life, which also looks really good and I'm thinking of actually listening to that one on audiobook, which I don't normally do. I usually am not a very good audiobook listener because my mind either wanders away or I fall asleep, but I really want to hear John Green narrate his own book and so I think that is how I'm going to read that one. Hopefully my mind does not wander. <sighs> We'll see. We'll give it a, our best shot. So the next question is the most anticipated release of the second half of this year, and that goes to Beast Boy Loves Raven by Cami Garcia and Gabriel Piccolo, which is coming out this September. This is the third book in a brand new DC Comics series about the Teen Titans. So far, it's only been Beast Boy and Raven, but I'm really hoping that Cyborg, Starfire, and Robin will be making appearance later on. But even if it's just Beast Boy and Raven, I'll be happy. I grew up with the Teen Titans show, the original cartoon, when I was a kid, and so my little nerd heart just loves this, this comic book series because Gabriel Piccolo, the illustrator of the series, based his character designs off of the designs of the Teen Titans from that show. So yes, I'm having so much fun with this series, and I love it. So that one. The next question on this list is the biggest disappointment that you've read this year, and that is going to go to The Two Princesses of Bamar by Gail Carson Levine. So Gail Carson Levine is the author of Ella Enchanted, which I read for the first time either last year or the year before. I really enjoyed it, and so I was really excited to read another book of hers. And I think a big reason for my disappointment is because I hyped this book a lot in my head. It was published back when I was 12 years old and I was the target audience of this book, and one of my friends had read it and she really liked it and was telling me I should read it too. And for some reason, I didn't get to it when I was 12, and it's been kind of on my mind here and there ever since. And then finally this year I said I was going to read this book and it really fell short for a few different reasons. Three main reasons why this book fell short for me are because the it took a while for the action to get going and the way that dragons and other magical creatures were treated in this book were 
kind of sad. But the main reason why I did not like this book is because of the main romantic relationship, which I thought was rather questionable because the two met when she was 12 years old and he was in human years, 17 years old. And then we see them again when she's 16 and we don't know what age he is. And that made me uncomfortable. And so, yeah. The next question on this list is biggest surprise. And I was very, very pleasantly and happily surprised by how much I enjoyed the series Sweat and Soap by Kintetsu Yamada, which is an adult romance manga series. So I didn't know how I was going to feel about this series at first because the setup is a little odd. So the two of them both work for a soap making company. They meet because the guy really is into smells and he smells her from across the room and then he comes up to her closer and smells her and then he asks if he can get her permission to smell her every day to get inspiration for his soaps and she says yes that's how things begin and so I was like that's weird but I kept hearing so many great things about this series and how healthy the, the relationship is and so I was like okay I'm gonna give it a try and I really really like it. I'm all caught up now and it's so cute and the, the relationship is so communicative and healthy and they both talk about how they're feeling and they both listen and it's just a slow paced love story about just the normal goings on about a healthy relationship like are we ready to move in together and stuff like that and it's just so cute. Ah, uh, so pleasant surprise. The next question on this list is favorite new author, either new to you or debut author, and that is once again a tie because it is between R.F. Kuang, the author of the Poppy War series, and Ashley Poston, the author of the Once Upon a Con series. So I read one book from both of these authors last year, which was the first book in both of their series. I have now completed both of their series this year, and I don't consider an author a favorite until I've read at least two of their books and now I've read three of both of these authors books and so I would say that they are both now new favorites and I am really excited to read more of their books. So the next question on this list is newest fictional crush and I actually have not had a fictional crush in a bit. Uh, the last time I had fictional crushes would, was when I was single and in my mid-20s and I remember having a crush on Joey from Friends. I just said that on the internet but anyway um, I'm just trying to say that I don't think I've so much aged out of fictional crushes as much as uh, I'm dating someone right now who I am way too busy being smitten by to be smitten by anybody else. So I'm changing this question to a romantic interest that others can learn from. And for that, I'm going to have to say Kotaro from Sweat and Soap because minus the beginning where he's a little bit too much into Asako's personal space, once they begin a relationship, he is a listener, he shares all of his feelings, he cares about her and her happiness and her comfortability, comfortab and making her comfortable. So I think that a lot of people can learn a lot from him. So that is my answer for that question that I through in there. The next question on this list is favorite newest fictional character and that is a tough question because I have a list and the list is Yin Neja from the Poppy War series, Rosie from the Once Upon a Con series, Anne and Marilla and Matthew and Diana from Anne of Green Gables, Komi and Tadano from Komi Can't Communicate which is a manga series, and Kotaro and Asako from Sweat and Soap. The next question is a book that made you cry and I can't remember if I shed actual tears but I was most heartbroken from reading the second and third books in the Poppy War series which were The Dragon Republic and The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. They both broke my heart, stomped all over it, and I can't do anything now but just recommend those books. The next question is a book that made you happy and that is going to go to Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston. I have mentioned this book several times now in this video but this book just made me so so darn happy. A few others that made me happy this year were Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery and I am almost finished with A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namie and I'm really that one's making me happy as well. So all of those are books that have made me very happy. The next question is the most beautiful book that you have either bought or received this year and I don't just have a book. 
So I splurged after I finished and with an E the Netflix adaptation of Anne of Green Gables and I wanted to read all of the Anne of Green Gables books. So I bought this beautiful eight volume collection of Anne of Green Gables and I just love the cover designs of all of these. And let me show you the cover design of the first one. I'm really picky when it comes to my classics. I want them to have beautiful covers because there are so many different options for covers for classics that I want to make sure I love the cover that I get because otherwise I'm going to buy a classic and be like, oh man, I wish I got that cover instead if I see a more beautiful cover in the bookstore. But I am very happy with the edition that I got. It's just so beautiful and I love the color palette and so my answer for that question is all of these. I've only read the first one so far but I cannot wait to read the rest. And the last question on this list is books that you need to read by the end of this year and I have a list once again. Uh, new releases on my list for the rest of this year are Suki Alone, which is an Avatar The Last Airbender graphic novel, XOXO by Axie O, and She Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan, and the backlist titles for the rest of this year that I need to read include Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, Beach Read by Emily Henry, Volume 1 of A Man and His Cat by Umi Sakurai, and The Utterly Uninteresting and Unadventurous Tales of Fred the Vampire Accountant, and and many, many, many more books that I've got to read before the end of this year. All right, so that is the end of this tag. Thank you all so much for watching till the end. If you are on booktube and you have not done this tag yet, I tag you. And if you made it this far and just want to let me know you're here, please leave a book emoji in the comments below. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe, and I will see you all again soon with another video. Bye!